Hello, my friends. This is Linda Lippin, and welcome to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. Well, hello, and welcome back one more time to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. This is your host, Linda Lippin. And I want to start off today with a little story about my orthopedic surgeon appointment this afternoon. So as some of you may know, because I have mentioned it here on the podcast and I have mentioned it in other places, I fell a few months ago and fell twice on my left knee. And my left knee has been paining me ever since. And I was pretty sure that I had probably done something to my meniscus because I had a pop and, you know, a particular medial location of the pain. But I also know that these things can often heal themselves and that before they'll do anything else, they, you know, want you to do physical therapy. And I know the, you know, strengthening and stretching that needs to be done. And I ended up getting full range of motion back and good strength and, you know, relatively good stability back. The problem is that it still hurts like all the time, like wake up at night kind of hurt. So I was at the surgeon uh, a few weeks ago And while I was there, as he was sending me for an MRI to get a definitive diagnosis, he handed me a list of anti-inflammatory supplements, which I thought was kind of interesting, and just mentioned that, you know, based on my x-rays, which showed some arthritic changes in both my knees, which is, you know, somewhat to be expected at 56, He did mention that, you know, dealing with the levels of inflammation in my body would be helpful for both pain relief or, you know, some lessening of the pain, um, as well as just for general kind of internal healing. So today I went to see the orthopedic surgeon who is actually going to do the meniscus repair surgery for me. And we discussed uh, my arthritis. And and then I mentioned that I had started taking all the anti-inflammatory supplements and, you know, looking a little bit more at what I'm eating and drinking. And he was like, yeah, you know, a lot of these are clinically proven to work and they do work. And there's no reason to not take them because generally, even if they don't help you, they're not going to hurt you. Uh, as I think most of us know, there are many issues with the anti-inflammatory medications um, that are out there that can either be injected or taken systemically. And we'll talk about that in a second. But this whole discussion really led me to start thinking about my own personal journey with chronic inflammation, you know? Inflammation is the body's normal immune response to an acute issue, whether it's an acute injury, whether it's an infection, bacterial or viral, um, the immune, the normal immune response is to kind of compartmentalize the bad stuff off and to send in fluid and different compounds that are part of the inflammation response that help assist healing. The problem in today's world is that so many of us have chronic inflammation. We have inflammation that just doesn't go away and that shows itself in a variety of ways. So I thought it would be interesting since I'm kind of in the middle of this anti-inflammatory journey uh, to do an episode 
on inflammation and specifically chronic inflammation. I've worked around enough Pilates teachers and in in enough Pilates studios to know that so many of my colleagues suffer from chronic inflammation, autoimmune issues, um, all kinds of stuff. I've also worked with enough clients who have chronic inflammation (laughs) to know that I would say safely that more than half of the population, at least in the United States, is walking around in the state of chronic inflammation. So even though acute inflammation is a great thing, right, because it assists healing, chronic inflammation is not so good and definitely affects quality of life. Chronic inflammation can come from autoimmune disorders, untreated acute inflammation. So if you have an issue or an injury or an infection that goes untreated, um, exposure to toxins, alcohol abuse, obesity, over or under exercising, (laughs) chronic stress, and smoking. So even if you just want to look at, you know, chronic stress, <laughs> obesity, and autoimmune disorders, we're looking at a huge chunk of the American population. Chronic inflammation is also related to a lot of the foods that we eat and that many of us, including myself, enjoy. Uh, fried foods, cured meats, refined oils, trans fats, and refined carbohydrates right? Like your sugar and your white bread and your pastry. So basically what we eat, what we ingest and what we're exposed to has a profound effect on our inflammation levels in our bodies. Now, acute inflammation is really easy to recognize, right? So if you've ever injured yourself, you know, you get that immediate kind of pain and swelling, redness and heat. and it's easy to spot and um and it's actually kind of easy to figure out what to do about it right like you kind of crave ice <laughs> you crave elevation you crave rest signs of chronic inflammation though are harder to see and oftentimes just start out as something that we may just normally live with like ongoing stomach pain or reflux, chest pain, joint pain, uh, trouble breathing, skin rashes, mouth sores, fatigue, fever. Um, Sometimes they're easy to live with, sometimes not so much. Now, I myself have several inflammatory conditions, right? I've got endometriosis, I've got arthritis, I've got eczema and rosacea. And, you know, I do love myself some fried foods. (laughs) and some sugar. And in my life, I have had a tendency to either over or under exercise and not really find a lot of middle ground with that up until recently. Now, the problem with medical treatment generally of inflammation is that other than like rest, ice, and elevation, you're looking at medications that can negatively affect the body, okay? Uh, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen cause stomach issues, um, can also contribute to high blood pressure. And then the other option is steroids or steroidal anti-inflammatories, either injected or given orally. And, you know, frankly, those come with a lot of negative side effects as well. So this is why I was so intrigued, you know, when my doctor came into the room and handed me this list of quote unquote, clinically proven anti-inflammatory supplements that work. And I went for that. So I came home from that appointment, went online, ordered all of them, and had all of them in hand by that Friday. 
So as of this coming Friday, I will have been taking the supplements for a month. And I have to say that I am able to take less pain medication. I still have my days when everything hurts. I still have my days when I can barely put weight on my knee. But those days are fewer and further between, and I'm able to get through them with less pain medication than I had to take before. Now, pain medication is an issue for me because it's really not naproxen that works for me, but I have issues with reflux and can't really tolerate a lot of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So, you know, finding a supplement regimen that wasn't too heinous, <laughs> that didn't involve too many large pills, but that still um, could be effective and helpful, you know, it has been a great thing. And for me, at least, they have been effective and helpful. And I did go online and look at a lot of the studies and Yes, all of these have clinical research behind them. So what am I taking? You may wonder. Number one, you want to look at what you're eating, okay? And what I really recommend doing and what works for me is just making sure that you add in all of the good foods because then you'll just be a little less hungry and interested in eating the other stuff. Okay. So if you make sure that you're getting good lean proteins, good oily fishes, um, some greens, maybe some cruciferous vegetables, you know, darker lettuces, spinach, kale. I don't do kale, but many people don't mind it. Broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, Get in some olive oil, maybe some seeds and nuts and tomatoes and berries. Okay. If you can do that, then I promise you, you're not going to be as hungry (laughs) for other stuff. And if you do eat it, you won't eat as much of it. Okay. So that's kind of how I um, kind of trick myself into eating slightly better food, still allowing myself to eat the other stuff. But I just end up eating less of it because I'm eating more of the better for me food. So I think that's kind of a good happy medium and at least a good way to start. Okay. Then you have your supplements. So the supplements that I'm taking now are a turmeric with curcumin and bioperine at 1,500 milligrams, two times a day. Then I take a 10-gram scoop of collagen peptides, and I put that in my morning coffee. I take 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 a day, which for me is two fish oil capsules, because remember, it's not 1,000 milligrams of fish oil it's if that or whatever oil you're using, <clears throat> you know, if you're vegan, you may be using vegetable produced oils with omega-3, which is fine, but just make sure that you're getting a thousand milligrams of omega-3 for what I take. That is 2000 milligram fish oil capsules a day. Then I take a 3,000 milligram powdered tart cherry extract capsule once a day. You can also drink 10 ounces of tart cherry juice twice a day, but I really can't do that. (laughs) That's just not going to work for me. Um, I would just rather take the capsule and the capsules have been shown to work as well as drinking 20 ounces of tart cherry juice a day. Um, which number one is expensive, uh, number two is hard to store (laughs) in the refrigerator, and number three, I just couldn't drink that much tart cherry juice on a daily basis. 
And then finally, as part of my evening kind of wind down ritual, I have a turmeric and ginger tea with honey. And that's what was on the page, turmeric and ginger tea with honey. So uh, I get the Whole Foods, the 365 brand, um, turmeric and ginger tea, which is yummy. And then I just add honey to that. Now, speaking about my morning coffee, I want you guys to know that I love coffee. And in fact, every morning I drink three cups. I drink a full French press of coffee. And I had gotten to the point where I just wasn't really loving the dairy creamers anymore. And I'd gotten some really good coffee beans. So I just started drinking my coffee black. But still, when I would go out, I would always have like a mocha latte or something, you know, creamy and frothy. And I have discovered that Laird Superfoods, and yes, that is Laird Hamilton, the surfer, they make a coffee creamer that is plant-based, that is full of MCT coconut oil, that adds fuel and adds great froth and flavor to my morning coffee. And since I got it, I have been taking the Peruvian medium roast coffee beans, grinding them nice and coarse for the French press, putting in two tablespoons of that Laird Superfoods mocha creamer and frothing it up in my cup. And I have to tell you, I kind of crave it now. I kind of love it. It makes it frothy. It makes it creamy. It's not too sweet. And it's really, really good for you sustainably sourced, non-GMO, just all good. Are you ready to feel more energized, focused, and supported? Go to lairdsuperfood.com forward slash goddess and add nourishing plant-based foods to fuel you from sunrise to sunset. Use our promo code goddess at checkout and to save 15% off your purchase today. And I am so glad that I can add my collagen, my anti-inflammatory collagen into the creamer and be done (laughs) with the supplements with a great cup of coffee and some lasting energy. All good. Now, in addition to the food and the supplements, we do need to discuss exercise. Because the last thing you want with chronic inflammation is to over-exercise. And I see so many of my clients, and particularly women over 50, which is kind of my, my target market, wanting to be in the same shape, in the same look, in the same feeling that they had when they were in their 20s and 30s. And in doing that, they end up pushing themselves in ways that inevitably lead (laughs) to exhaustion, to sickness, to injury, and to chronic inflammation. So all of the, you know, exercise programs that are marketed to us as women are right now a lot of high intensity focused. Even if you look at like Club Pilates or you look at, you know, any of the newer kind of mega former based uh, Pilates workouts that are out there. They are a blend of really intense, fast paced exercise and really heavy spring strength training done very quickly 
And it's really, it's not what Pilates is, and it's not what Joseph Pilates meant his workout to be. But if you also look at, you know, the other fitness studios, all the boutique chains that are out there, most of them are handing out high intensity workouts. And in fact, that's how they brand themselves and that's how they make their money. So, you know, whether you're going to a CrossFit gym where you are guaranteed of extraordinarily intense Olympic style weight training workout, or whether you're going to an Orange Theory or you're going to a Club Pilates or you're going to, you know, any of the Megaformer studios, you are basically putting your body through a whole lot of stress. And if you are not allowing your body to rest and recover in between, you're not doing yourself any favors. We don't need high intensity, heavyweight exercise all the time. And in fact, some folks argue that as we get older, we really don't need that kind of exercise at all, but kind of need nice moderate exercise that we can actually do on a daily basis without needing a ridiculous amount of recovery time just to keep ourselves functional and active. This is a time with chronic inflammation when less is more. Now, that doesn't mean you want to do nothing, okay? That's not how this works, but you don't need to just go crazy. You want to start with some gentle full body strengthening, okay? So whether you do that with springs or, you know, bands or bungees and Pilates, whether you do that using light to moderately heavy weights, Um, you do want some strength and resistance training, okay? It helps train balance, it helps train endurance, and it helps keep your joints mobile and your body strong, okay? And something that happens with age is increased rate of muscle loss or sarcopenia. So you can counter the loss of muscle with strength training, which helps you build muscle. Okay. So strength training is important. Now, cardio is also important. Now, if every once in a while you want to do some interval based cardio or some, you know, high intensity interval training cardio, go for it but have that be very short in duration. I also don't recommend that you go for the long form, moderate cardio, because that again can just be too much of the same movements all the time. So when you're doing cardio, you want to be moving at a pace that's a little bit challenging not where you just can't breathe and have to stop, but where you're a little bit short of breath. Maybe you can't hold a conversation at the same time that you're moving. And you want to do that for about 20 to 30 minutes a few times a week. Okay. That's all you need. And then you want some stretching and mobility work. Now, some workouts like Actually, a good strength training workout will also take you into mobility work. A good Pilates workout is definitely going to take you into mobility work at the same time. So sometimes you don't have to choose between the two, okay? But it is helpful to do a little bit of dedicated stretching and mobility work for your body every day. Um, 
doing all of the joints, doing the neck, doing the head a little bit, doing the upper body, doing the lower body, making sure that all the joints are moving and working, you know, as well as they can. You just don't want to be sore all the time, okay? Being sore all the time from exercise is a sign of chronic inflammation. It is not a badge of honor. And look, you don't have to join a gym or a studio to do any of this, okay? You can do safe and effective exercise at home. I think you all know that I teach my clients online via Zoom. And my clients are thriving. They are all doing extraordinarily well. The women with osteoporosis are gaining bone density. The people with back and joint pain are feeling better and are not having their backs go out as much. And they are doing this in relatively short workouts, you know, maybe half an hour to 45 minutes, three to five times a week. Again, nothing over the top, but enough to make sure that you are strong, you are mobile, and your heart and lungs are working well. So if you would like any more information on working with me, just head on over to lindalippin.com, spelled just like my name, L-Y-N-D-A-L-I, two P's is in Peter, I, N is in Nancy, dot com and check out the Strong Bones Pilates Studio. And if you're a Pilates teacher, I have a very special program for you, which is my Pilates Teacher Mastermind VIP subscription. And within that subscription program, you get a lot of access to me. You get weekly lessons You get live classes, live coaching sessions, and all of that for $47 a month. So while you're there at lindalippin.com, you can also just click on Pilates Teachers and take a look at Pilates Teacher Mastermind VIP. I also have two free Facebook groups. So if you are on Facebook and would like to connect Uh, You can find me at Strong Bones Pilates or Pilates Teacher Mastermind. And I would love to connect with all of you over there as well. So as always, thank you so, so much for listening. Thank you for supporting the podcast. And if you have not, and if you have a chance... I would love it if you would go over to the Apple Podcasts app, to Spotify, or to Podchaser, and the links are all in the show notes, and leave a rating and a written review, especially if you love the podcast. (laughs) All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Pilates Goddess podcast. Music brought to you by Nerd Salad. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, especially if you liked it. And please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks. Thanks.